And that I talked, uh, was it last time we said, and I talked about that, about the moral life. Remember I talked about the, the, the journey from slavery to freedom, basically. Huh? Christian freedom is what we live, how we live out all this stuff, how we get, get free. Uh, so today, then, with that in mind, we want to talk about social justice, about the basic issues of our world that, that are uh, about how, how we can live uh, rightly together, how we can shape the world in a, in a better way, make a better world for everyone, really. And what, is, what do Christians have to say about this? Uh, that's that, what do we as Catholic Christians have to say about this? We have a lot of things uh, very specific that we've said for a long time. And the way to kind of uh, uh, get at this, I'd like to, I'd like to go back to the, to the creed uh, that we, and, and think about it from, from the creed that we, we started with. Remember we said at, the, at Mass, we say we believe in one God, the, the Father, the Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth. Huh? So there's the place to start, is that uh, is God is the creator. He's the creator of the world. And let's just, let's just read about the account of that from the book of Genesis uh, in the first chapter. Uh, God said, let the earth bring forth living creatures according to their kinds, cattle and creeping things and beasts of the earth according to their kinds, and so it was. And God made the beasts of the earth according to their kinds, and the cattle according to their kinds, and everything that creeps upon the ground according to its kind, and God saw that it was good. But just, this little phrase is real important. God saw that what he made in the world, all the animals and the world, he saw that it was all good, it was all good. That's the creator we believe in, the creator of a good world. Then God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him male and female, he created them. And God blessed them and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air, so on. So this is very simple. I think probably everybody has heard these passages before, but when you think about it from the perspective of social justice and the, and the world in which we live, this right away brings out some exceedingly important points that are real, that are real simple to, to remember, I think. If you can just remember that, that God created these animals, the creeping things, the cattle and the fish and the sea, and he found it very good. And then he put man over all of them. Huh? That, uh, now, right away, uh, this, is, this is bringing us up against, uh, and he said, be fruitful and multiply. Be fruitful and multiply. Uh, this is already touching up against one of the big uh, questions of our time, and that's the environment. Right? Environmentalism. Uh, now there are people that uh, say that, uh, maybe I don't know if you're aware of this, probably are, probably know more about this than I do, but there are people that say that the problem, you know what the problem is in the world? Human beings. And that the, the, the best thing to do to protect the environment is for us to go out of existence. There are really literally people that are arguing this now that the best thing to do is for humans to get out of the way because of the big footprint we make. And uh, if we just were to get off the face of the earth, everything would be better. Well, this is directly, as Christians, we find this immediately, would find this uh, inconceivable. Because we know that God made the world, all that is in it, found it as good, and then gave us the responsibility of caring for it. Not to walk out of it. He said, be fruitful and multiply. He wants us to, to, be, to, be, uh, to grow and to develop. Huh? So right off the bat from this account, we have an insight into uh, one of the major issues of our time. Uh, the, um, so there's two things here that I, in that passage that I just read. A, the, the, the goodness of the world. The world is good. God made it good. And the image man and woman in the image of God. This is the basic principle, that you are made in the image of God, and so am I. 
and that every human being is made in the image and likeness of God. Now this has all kinds of consequences, all kinds of consequences. Uh, and the first one is uh, that uh, some principles of social justice here, right off the bat, we can take from, from this account already. First of all, that, that, well, as I said, that man is the steward of creation. It is our responsibility to keep creation good and fruitful. Be fruitful and multiply. So, for example, if the practices of the human race are such that, uh, that we're turning a, a, a forest into a desert, or at least when I was growing up, especially in the 60s and stuff, when we became aware of how we would just dump all kinds of pollutants into rivers and things so that fish were being killed right and left and animals couldn't survive, all this kind of thing, where, where we're just destroying the world by our by irresponsible selfishness, well, this is not helping things to multiply, is it? it? It's not increasing and multiplying. It's not being good stewards over the resources uh, that God has given us. What's important about that is that if, if we use up all the resources, or not, that if we were to use up disproportionate resources so that people that come after us don't have them, then it makes it hard for them to multiply, right? Does this make any sense at all now? And if, feel free, please, to, to raise questions and or to disagree with me because I'm not the Pope. I'm just talking, trying to think about these things myself here. But this, this is this fundamental, this is the first page of the Bible, the first page of the Bible about this. And this business of, of the, the goodness of creation and caring for creation in a right way is, is fundamental. Huh? But even more fundamental, I would say, is that, is that we are made in the image and likeness of God. That is to say that every single person has dignity. We call that the dignity of the human person, dignity. That word dignity is from worth, means how much worth you have. And you know, uh, you, you talk, we, we, did I mention this? I think I mentioned this before, last class maybe. We hear a lot about self-esteem. Didn't I talk about self-esteem last time, I think? That's one, a phrase we hear a lot, that we need to have a good sense of self-esteem. And I guess that's important, but frankly to me, that's not very important. Because what I think is more important is, is self-worth. How much am I worth? Which means how much would someone else pay for me? That's the interesting question. Not how much I, how much I think of myself, but how much does someone else think of me so that he or she would be, would be willing to give something for me? How do we know that? Well, there's one place we know that, and that's the crucifix. That's why the crucifix is such an important symbol for us, is it tells us in a glance, this is my worth. This is my self-worth. I am worth the death of the Son of God. That's how highly God esteems you and me and every human being. He made us like himself, he made us for himself, and he gave himself to help us to be true to ourselves. Huh? And this is, a, this is universal. There's no, there's no distinction between races or per Every human person has this dignity that God gives from the beginning. Um, now, there's a, something else that's said a little bit later here in the book of, of Genesis that's very important, and that is that it's not good. God saw, he's, when Adam, he first created Adam, and then later he created Eve, but first he saw that it's not good for man to be alone. It's not good for man to be alone. And this tells us something. So then he created Eve so that there would be companionship. And this tells us something that God means us to live together, that we need one another. To be fully human, we need other people. Our lives are interdependent. Huh? That, that, uh, that, that we need to be able to depend on one another to live well. Uh, this, is, this is very, very important, this little point here, as I hope I can illustrate when we get to, I'm gonna to to probably put off some concrete questions, uh, the issues rather until the end, but try to draw on these things we're learning already. But it's not good for man to be alone. We need to care for one another and to be willing to let others care for us. 